Hey there, welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about many different methods to control a selected card. Firstly, let's talk about one of my favorite ways to control a card using invisible controls. Invisible controls don't involve any cutting or any shuffling. The goal of an invisible control is to have the card seemingly placed into the deck in a very fair manner and without any other moves, the card is naturally, magically on top. Let's get into the first invisible control, which is arguably one of the easiest but most convincing methods you'll learn today. A card is selected and simply placed into the deck, maybe here. And then I'll ask the spectator, if you had to guess between position maybe 1 and 52, where do you think your card would be? And they'll give any answer between, you know, 20 and 40. Unbeknownst to them, their card is naturally, magically at the top of the deck, and the magician can go into whatever the trick is that he has planned. This utilizes the Marlowe tilt, where while the spectators are memorizing their card, all the magician is going to do is simply lift up that top card just a bit, maybe just a quarter of an inch, and he's going to hold it there with his fingers. When the card is going to be replaced back into the deck, the magician is going to do two subtleties. One, he's going to kind of push some cards outwards from the back, just to make it seem like the Magician is trying to find a soft spot. And then when he places the card right underneath that tilted card, he's going to give it just a slight bend to make it seem like there's pressure under, on top of the card. From there, let your hand relax. And then if you wanted to, you can go into an ACR. You're set up for two phases of it. Or you can simply ask, now if you had to guess between position 1 and 52, where your card would be, where, where would you think? And while they're giving you their answer, you're going to replace this card in the exact same way you did their chosen card, but you'll do it for real. And so they're giving you the answer while they're looking at you, replace this card in the exact same way. Which makes it seem like you placed their card in for real, if they had any doubt. A card is selected and memorized, and as long as the card can be seen, uh, this method works. So the card is just simply placed at the bottom of the deck or in the middle, wherever, without any other moves, the card is controlled to the top. This method uses a double-backed card, and the cards are actually given a bit of an upbend, so that when the double-back is flipped, there's actually a slight air gap here. Not only that, but the cards are actually going to be shifted just slightly with the thumb, so that it's really easy to peel off that double-backed card. When the card is going to be replaced, it's going on top of that double-backed card, and we're just putting a little bit of pressure from your index finger into your palm. You can naturally peel off those two cards extremely easily. From there, to do a convincing double turnover, just do it slowly. Put some pressure on the card, kind of like a paintbrush, and then when it comes to letting it fall, just follow it down with your index finger. From there, they think this is their card, but it's secretly the double-backed card. You can place this in the middle of the deck, place it at the bottom, do whatever you want to to go into the rest of your trick. If you don't have a double-backed card, what you can do instead is secretly flip over a card at the top of the deck and have them select their card with it face up. From there, when it comes time to replacing their card in the deck, you're just going to simply turn their card over like this and then turn the whole deck over. You secretly have two cards, they think it's just one, and then you can execute the double turnover just the same. Let's say you have a spectator just touch a single card, or maybe you're dribbling the cards, and they choose this card here. You'll give them a quick peek at it, and then from there, we can simply place that card on the table, or we could replace it back into the deck, do whatever we want to. Without any other moves, the card is controlled to the top. All that's happening here is we're going to show them actually this second card. They maybe touched this one, but we're going to show them the second one by simply pu pulling our thumb back. So when we pull the cards up, we pull that card backwards, and we show them this card. On our way back down, we're going to square up the deck with our fingers, and then push off that top card. They think this is the card they just peeped. It's actually this card. From there, we can simply replace this back onto the top of the deck, and then we can lose their card in any way we want to. Let's say a single card is touched, or maybe it's being replaced back into the deck, and you're going to give them one last look at their card. Tell them to keep the focus on their card, as it is slowly 
blossom into the middle of the deck. Without any other moves, the card is controlled to the bottom. While we are showing them their card like this, we're going to have our middle and third finger on their card, but we're going to put our thumb on the card right beside it. And so when that, we pull our hand down, we're going to pull their card inwards with these two fingers while pulling this card outwards. So in slow motion, it looks like this. In full motion, it looks like this. From there, we simply kick that card out, which they think is their card, and we're going to let their card actually drop. And so that's going to naturally put that card at the bottom of the deck. They think this is their card, but it's actually at the bottom, and we just simply hook it in. Let's talk about some shuffles. With their card on top, all we're going to do is let some of those cards fall, and then we're going to aim this next pack of the cards kind of halfway, more towards our wrist, so like this. What that does is it actually creates a bit of a lip for us to use a little bit later. So we're just going to pile the rest of these cards on. Next, we're going to put pressure on that lip to get a thumb break between the rest of the cards and their card at the top. From there, we just kind of let these other cards fall, and then we have their chosen card on top, and the card is controlled to the top. So in full motion, it looks like this. Now earlier, I showed you that control where the card was naturally controlled to the bottom, but let's say you need it on the top. An easy way to do that would be to just give the cards a shuffle, and when you feel that last card, which is their chosen card, you're just going to simply shuffle that on top. Or maybe their card is on top, but you actually need it on the bottom, so you can just simply peel that card off and then continue shuffling cards. With a lot of these shuffles and some of the cuts we'll go into later, you generally want to follow them up with another shuffle. An easy way to accomplish that is with a false ripple shuffle. So after controlling the card with maybe a cut or a shuffle, what I can do is give the cards a ripple shuffle and just letting their card fall last. Or maybe if it's at the bottom, let it fall first. And that will keep their card in the intended position while giving the illusion of a fully shuffled deck. Here's another easy way to control a card that most people don't think about. And I'll do this random. I'll turn my head a bit. Okay. And the card will be buried into the middle of the deck. And in fact, a spectator can continue cutting if they want to. The magician is going to simply pull the cards to himself and think, hmm, you know what, tell you what, I'll try something different. Uh, and then he goes into the rest of the trick while the card is controlled to the top. This version uses the key card principle where while they're looking at their card, the magician is just going to secretly peep the identity of the bottom card. When they replace their card and they bury their card into the deck, they're actually placing the key card that the magician was remembering right next to their chosen card. So when the, when the magician is spreading the deck to himself, all he has to do is look for his key card and then their chosen card will be the one immediately right of that. From there, he's just going to cut the deck at that point and then go into the rest of the trick. The card is controlled to the top. Let's talk about cuts. This is the famous, or rather, maybe infamous double undercut. Just lose the card in the deck, give it a few cuts, and a shuffle. And the card is controlled to the top. The way to do this would be to have their card placed on the second half of the deck. And then I'm going to aim this packet kind of towards the middle of the deck, and then shift my hand forward. So the cards will land here, and I shift it forward. What that does is it creates a lip at the back of the deck right here. Then I can transfer that to a pinky brick under the guise of squaring up the cards and then transfer that to a thumb brick. From here I'm just going to lift up half of those bottom cards and then the other half which is as their chosen card. Square the whole thing up. Now if I left it there it might be a little suspicious so I'm going to add in that riffle shuffle we talked about earlier. This next one is kind of like a double undercut, but it just uses a table. It's more like a double top cut, if that makes sense. Uh, just give the deck a few cuts and a riffle shuffle. And the card is naturally at 
the top. The card is placed at the top of this bottom half of the deck, and then we kind of bury the card in the same way we did earlier. Get that pinky break, and then we lift off half of those top cards, then the other half, and then place the bottom half on top, which leaves their chosen card on top, and then we follow it with a ripple shovel. Here's another method for cutting a card into the deck. It's still on top. All I'm doing here is simply kicking these cards over, reaching underneath, grabbing that top packet, and when you do this kind of perpendicular motion, and you kind of swing the hands around, it just kind of fools the eye into thinking the halves are you know, flipped, but in reality, absolutely nothing happens. It's just, it looks like the card is being cut, or it looks like the deck is being cut, but in reality, nothing's happening. Another way to do this would to be holding the deck in your left hand, and you're gonna kind of pull your right hand over, grab the back half of the deck, and you can square it up however you want to, go into the same motions, and again, it looks, it's an illusion, it looks like the deck's being cut, when in reality, absolutely nothing is happening. You can do this in your hands if you wanted to, make it way like that. It looks like the deck's being cut, but in reality, these are completely false cuts. Now, I hope this gives you an idea of a few different methods for controlling a card, either invisibly, using shuffles, or using cuts. With any of the shuffles or cuts, you generally want to do at least two of them, so you don't want to do a double undercut by itself, or just a riffle shuffle by itself. You generally want to pair them up to make the illusion of losing the card more convincing. And again, with shuffles, it's not something you want to draw attention to. It's something you want to be talking through. It's something you want to be maybe explaining something through. Again, thanks for watching. Peace.